Hey guys, Jessica here. So today we are going to be talking about pump firmware. Pump firmware is an issue that we are becoming increasingly aware of, and it's something that I think consumers should know before they decide if they want to purchase a smart pump. And it's something that consumers need to think about how it could impact their breastfeeding journey when it comes to breast pumps. So smart breast pumps are highly desirable. Smart breast pumps are breast pumps that have an app interface that allows them to either communicate with the app in order for the app to read what's going on in the pump, or in some cases, you can actually control your pump from the phone, which is really cool, honestly. Um, there's several pumps that can do that now. We've got the Pumpables Super Genie that has that app interface. We've got the Ardo Alyssa, which has that app interface, Willow Generation Pumps. The Gen 3 now has the ability to interface with the app in a way that allows you to control the suction and start and stop the pump from the app, which is really cool. You've got the Willow Go, which has an app that allows you to read the suction levels and the settings from the um, app, but it doesn't allow you to control anything that's actually happening on the pump. You still have to manually control the pump. And then you've got the babyation pump, which essentially is entirely phone operated if you want it to be. So these, this is not you know, one product, it's not one brand. LV Original also has a really good app that controls the LV and the LV Stride has app control. So there are lots of companies now that are producing these smart pumps and they're all operated by something called firmware, which is the software that actually tells your pump how to function. So when the pump comes to you, it already has firmware installed and that firmware is what controls the pump's program. That tells the pump how fast it cycles, how strong the cycle or how strong the suction should be. It tells the pump how, if it's supposed to start, if it's supposed to stop. It tells the pump to auto cut off. These are all things controlled by the firmware. With smart pumps, what we need to understand is that the firmware that leaves the factory and the original firmware is not what you're stuck with. So with the Willow 3.0, for example, when we got that pump back and I think it launched in 2020, in 2020, we could not control it from the app. All you could do was read what was happening on the pump from the app. A couple months ago, they released a firmware update and it did two things. It gave us app control. So now you can control it from there. It also changed the suction. So it had an impact on the pump that was not necessarily something that consumers understood when we downloaded that firmware update. We knew we were downloading the ability to control it. What we didn't know is that it also altered some of the settings on the pump. Where that becomes an issue is that your milk letdown reflex is a trained reflex. So when you are trained to a pump and then the pump changes, you may not respond to it. So if you are exclusively using a smart pump and something changes with the firmware, you may not respond to your pump, which is a huge concern when expressing your milk is how you feed your baby and how you maintain your milk supply. If you have other pumps as a backup that you respond to well and that you can use, great. That is actually what we recommend with smart pumps is have another pump on hand to use because we know that these issues can happen. The first time I became aware that this could actually be a thing was when my Willow Gen 2 all of a sudden lost suction on one side. It was like a battery internally died and the suction just slowly drained away until it did nothing. This came right after a firmware update. And it wasn't just my pump that that happened to. It happened to a lot of people. If your pump is under warranty when this happens, great. They just send you a new pump and off you go. And it's you know not that big of a deal other than the hassle of not having your pump for a period of time. But let's, let's get into what we know because... Back when we had the Gen 2, you know, the, the booby barometer that Allison with New Little Life designed, it didn't exist. There were manual gauges, but no one was really watching. Or if they were, that data hasn't become publicly available. Most of the data on how these pumps are operating and what these firmware changes are doing, it's proprietary information to the company. So your medical device, your breast pump has a lot of information you're not privy to, and they don't have to tell you about it. And we can't find any regulation that says that they have to, which means 
no one's accusing any of these companies of doing something unethical or illegal. This is just a reality of smart pumps that we need to be aware of. But now that the technology does exist, we can actually hook these pumps up to suction gauges and take a look at what is happening and track, did this change? So let's start with what we know happened with the Willow Generation 3. So the blue here is showing you the suction pattern on this. Let me enlarge this. So the dark blue here is the original simulation settings on the Willow Gen 3. You went from 20 to 100 and then 30 to 105 on the different settings. After the update with the app control, what we saw is that people reported their pump felt different. And what we found is that this definitely changed. Now the bottom strength on these pumps has changed. It does not go as low. And for the user's experience, what that did is it changed what we call the swing, which is the difference ultimately between the lowest setting and the highest setting. Now, remember the Willow Gen 3 is a constant suction pump. So your nipple is under constant suction and it's pulsing and pulling within this range. This was a good thing in that we knew that the Willow Gen 3 was causing some issues with nerve overstimulation with it going too low for the constant suction. We'd already found this issue. We'd come up with a lot of hacks at the time for how to address it, but the issue still persisted. We had to work with it. This update changed that, but we had a lot of people who were not super happy about this because it changed how their pump felt. And when you change how the pump feels, you change how you respond to it. And for pumps like the Willow Generation pumps, you then have to retrain your body to respond to this really unique, but you know, ultimately kind of fabulous suction that has offers a level of freedom that no other pumps have come close to yet. So this was a good change. I'm not saying it was a bad change at all, but if you were further postpartum, that meant that you had a couple of weeks where you really couldn't rely on your pump as much. And this was especially challenging as this happened in the stimulation mode, which is already shortened on the Willow Gen 3, because once you've been pumping for a few minutes, it goes to expression and you can't go back to stimulation without unlatching and relatching the pump, which is a lot of hassle. People buy the Willow generation pumps because they want less hassle in their pumping journey, not more. So this did cause a little bit of upset. The Willow Go has had some real issues with its firmware. Um, back in the fall, we had a firmware release for this pump that just really didn't work right. And a lot of pumps ultimately seemed to download the firmware incorrectly or couldn't download it at all. And their app was really messed up because it kept trying to download this firmware that wasn't working. And there was nothing you could do about it except just not use the app. So people were understandably mad because they bought this pump because they wanted the app. And even if the app is fairly limited, that was still something they wanted and they had paid for and they didn't have for an extended period of time. And this can happen with any firmware. This happens with smartphones too. We have Apple updates that roll out and turn iPhones into bricks or don't work right or cause all these new issues. Apple's just a much bigger company, so the solutions come a little bit faster. But what we're noticing now and the biggest firmware change that I think we have like some pretty good data on, and it's one that we're not sure whether it's you know, this was an intentional thing or whether this is an inadvertent side effect of a firmware release, which can happen. But take a look at this initial chart. So here is the data for nine different hubs that we were doing at different times. Um, some of them were on manual gauges. Some of them were on the booby barometer style technology, which is a graphing presser gauge. But both are fairly equivalent and, you know, acceptable within the industry. So what we started noticing is that there were, you know, kind of two bands developing with some of these hubs that we were having some issues with malfunctioning somewhere in the middle. But when we removed the hubs that were malfunctioning, what we noted is that there has been an overall drop in strength in some of the um, Willow Go hubs. And there isn't really a good answer on this yet, unfortunately. My hope is that eventually we will have an answer because this pump is advertised as operating at 280. 
So the highest numbers we had here were 265 and 270. This was very consistent with what we saw at the initial release of the pump. As soon as I got the original Will of Go, I pressure tested it to see because they, when you say that a wearable hub can go to 280, that's a pretty substantial claim. We have lots of wall pumps that can't do 280. We have hospital grade pumps. You know, Amita Platinum only goes to 250. And that's considered to be a really strong and reliable pump. So this was really exciting. Now we're kind of maxing out about 250. And we've had a couple different people put these on pressure gauges. And this is what we're seeing. Now, only time is going to tell because we haven't gotten, you know, the best answers yet on what is causing this. Is this, are these malfunctioning hubs? Are these hubs that are ultimately going to die? Or has there just been a change in the program? So the, that last graph doesn't look super concerning, but then look at this one where you can see the actual percentage change. This is anywhere between a 13% reduction and a 37% reduction on average. At the upper levels, you only lost about 10%, but you know, expression level one was a 37% decrease. So the fact that it does appear to be a very similar pattern in the original tiered suction that we have with this pump. And now it all appears to have been reduced fairly evenly. That is something that is concerning. And for some parents, they have found that they just stopped responding to this new suction pattern and they now have to readjust, which again, is an issue that the further postpartum you are, the harder it is. If you are a first time parent or first time Willow Go user who just picked this up, you're probably not going to notice any difference. This is still a very powerful hub, even with this change in the firmware and how the suction is working. But that is something to consider is firmware does have the capacity for any company to come in and change your suction. They could greatly increase it. They could greatly decrease it. Now let's talk about one where the firmware very clearly did not go as planned. Here's the babyation pump. This is a brand new pump. It is unlike anything else on the market. And here we just happen to catch some pretty good data. So here is a run of the stimulation mode that I had hooked up to the pressure sensor. Some of these graphs are kind of, you know, you can see that there's some, there's some ripples and changes. That's actually very consistent with the fact that we don't actually understand how this pump is operating. It almost appears to have two separate vacuums being established at the same time, which is unlike anything we've seen before. But there was a firmware update and immediately with the firmware update, my pump went from operating correctly to not holding suction and sounding like a Jeep running down a bumpy road. There was an increase in suction, but it wasn't draining into the drainage line. Um, we started having a lot of issues when I hooked this pump up to the pressure gauge multiple runs showed me this pump was clearly malfunctioning. Something went wrong with the firmware update and the end result was a dead pump. And again, this is one of those cases where if you have a warranty, it just gets replaced. And if you don't, well, they don't actually have to do anything about it. That is a concern, especially when you buy a smart pump used. Now, I also want to make sure that, you know, people know that the original LV pump had this happen. I think it's happened twice that I can remember that people started reporting a suction pattern change. People had hubs that just quietly started dying. LV's firmware is actually very easy going when it gets updated. You almost really don't notice it. Their app is very elegant in design, especially compared to some of the competitors. It just kind of happens in the background and most of the time it happens just fine, but twice it's changed the suction patterns just slightly enough that users noticed and that was that was a problem and unfortunately this happened before the pressure gauges the graphene pressure gauge that Allison designed has the potential to help us identify when this is happening in real time now so we don't have great data on some of this but i think going forward we are going to have data on this and this is really important because just because somebody hasn't used this firmware, you know, nefariously to my knowledge to date, doesn't mean there won't be a company that doesn't make a decision that is going to compromise the pumps. We've seen it happen in other, other technologies. There's no reason to believe that 
breast pumps are, you know, somehow immune to less than honorable intentions. If anything, the competitive breast pump market makes them more vulnerable because there's a lot of urge and need for these companies to make us want their technology. And if what you have is working and you're satisfied with it, their latest and greatest may not be enough to get you to open your wallet again. So what is important is that it's something you need to consider. If you are somebody who has a letdown reflex that is very easily influenced, and I am one of those people, if my pump hiccups wrong, I may not respond to it. I have the ability to use a wide variety of pumps, but I only have that ability because I continuously use a wide variety of pumps. If I don't use a particular pump that has a unique suction pattern consistently, I will stop responding to it and I have to restart any adjustment periods there are. And with some of these smart pumps, especially constant suction pumps like the Babyation and the Willow Generation pumps, that can be a fairly substantial period of time where you have to really work to teach your body that this sensation is requesting milk and I need to make milk now. It is something you, you need to consider. You're paying a lot of money for these pumps. And oftentimes these are not your, you know, heavy duty, durable pumps that we encourage you to purchase when you're pregnant. These are, you know, kind of luxury convenience items. Your Spectre S1, it doesn't have the ability to have a firmware update. It just is what it was when it came from the factory. It's either operating or it's not. And, you know, part of the reason we love that pump is because it tends to operate very, very well. The Spectre S1 isn't going to suddenly change. Now, new models could change. They could put new firmware on new models. And we have pump companies that have changed the firmware and the, you know, even in some cases, the hardware on a pump, and it is different. So you may get a replacement pump that clearly is not the same. And we've got videos coming out about that in, you know, a few weeks. But there's a lot of potential for good and bad here. And it's something that you really need to consider when you pick your pump is that, Things may not go the way that you expected them to go. And with the firmware changes, it's not like you can go back to a previous version. And oftentimes you have to update the pump to keep it functional because the root reason that the firmware is released is to address a bug. I don't believe these companies are just out here giving us new features for fun, except when they learn how to do them, like the um, generation three, where we got app control, which was awesome. But it also changed some pumps. So Think about this when you're buying a smart pump. Does this pump have an app interface? Am I okay with the potential for my pump to be altered while I'm using it? And if they do alter it, what what is my recourse? Is there recourse? To date, we don't know that there is recourse. Now, there may be some changes in practices where the fact that we can now hook these things up and start seeing things that previously we couldn't may make companies a little more hesitant to do certain things that may upset moms. You also have to remember when you roll out firmware, you don't always get to control how it's going to interface with a motor that already has wear on it. Breast pumps are heavily used items for a lot of people. So your motor may only be three months old, but may have, you know, hundreds of hours of wear on it. So that motor may not respond to a firmware update the way the brand new one in the lab or the factory did. So these are all just things to think about. Again, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just something we need to be aware of. And it's something that we probably want to keep an eye on because as consumers, we want our pumps to work. And as professionals, I want to know that when I recommend a pump, because I think that these, this program and these settings will work for this mom, I want to know that it's going to stay that way. I'm not recommending a program for a mom because it'll work for the next three months before the next big change. I want it to last for the duration of her breastfeeding journey. So, you know, let me know your thoughts on firmware. Let me know, you know, questions you have about it. And we'll see if we can't get more answers. And, you know, let me know if you've seen any of this happen with your own pumps. 